Here's the third question from Hannah. Why are people seeking out spirituality as an antidote to that? Now, that really depends on what we mean by spirituality. We may mean a particular set of doctrines or beliefs about the supernatural, a commitment to a supernaturalistic metaphysics. That would be unfair because whether or not there's something like the supernatural for all of history, of all of our history, and across all of our cultural context is seriously questionable. Instead, spirituality deals with spirits. But what do we mean? Think about, the, was that what, is that a spirit in the way we mean it? People need to engage in practices that help them cultivate not just their beliefs, but how they pay attention, how they are connecting, how they're connecting to themselves, to each other, to the world, member, religio. And a lot of those practices require ritual because they're not just about having beliefs. They're about educating our attention, how we're shaping our agency, how we're anticipating and connecting to the world, what kind of perspective we have, how we're oriented. You need things that tap into all of those aspects of our cognition, not just those inferential and evidence-gathering processes, so important to something I value greatly, science. Right? We need things other than science. See, the scientific worldview gives us sort of explanations of everything, except it doesn't explain to us how we cultivate religio and whom should we do it with. Now, what do I mean by ritual? Well, you have to understand this, this idea of enacted imagination. So I want you to compare the difference between imagining a sailboat where you're f forming a mental picture you're looking at, right? And a little kid imagining that they are Superman. Perhaps they even tie a blanket around themselves and they run around the house. Now, they might be, but they don't need to be looking at in their mind an image of Superman. Instead, what they're doing is they're kind of putting the image on. They're enacting it, embodying it, and they're looking through it. And they're trying to see both outwardly, what's the world like from superman's perspective and his form of agency and they're also looking within how does this fit with me how does this call me how does this help me to grow now, of course kids aren't saying that to themselves explicitly but that's what the best developmental psychology says they're doing right they're using the they're using imagination not as mental pictures but as this enacted assuming of identity, taking up a perspective, realizing new ways of religio, new roles, new religio, new ways of respecting, to look at. That's what respect means, respecting reality. That's the cultivation of virtue, skills and virtues. That's the imaginal. And when we do imaginal things and we reinforce them by getting other people to do them with us. Why? Why other people? Because other people are our best source of self-correction on our self-deception. It is very hard for me within the biases of my framing to see how I'm biased. It's very easy for you to see from without. That's why you're so good at giving romantic advice to your friends and so bad at taking it for yourself. So we need each other. And as we plug in together, it's like the way the computers are networked together to give us the power of the internet. We plug in together and we mutually correct and we mutually enha en enhance our capacity to solve problems. So we want to use imaginal in that shared way. That's a ritual. And we need to build a framework around it, a mythos, such that it goes deeply into us, deeply into each other. So we're deeply resonating with religio with each other and broadly and deeply into many domains of our life, transforming our lives like the kid is trying to grow up. There's a saying from the Hellenistic period, from the wisdom philosophies, as the child is to the adult, the adult is to the sage. Maturation is primarily about facing up to reality. Notice the imaginal language even in that. 
if that's what you mean by spirituality, if you mean ecologies of ritual practice done individually and shared, why do I say ecologies? There is no one panacea practice. All practices have their strengths and weaknesses. They have to be put into complex, complementary relations at many scales of operation because that's how your cognition works at different like levels and scopes of reality from very concrete to very abstract. You have to have this abstract. You have this very comprehensive mythos framos, mythos framework, right? For individual and collective ritual, ritual, ritualized ecologies of practices, or perhaps better, ecologies of ritual practice, done and individually and collectively. Now, of course, those used to be homed in religion. The religious philosophies, the philosophical religions. I'm trying to use a very big umbrella term here to capture things like Stoicism and Buddhism and Christianity and Islam. It used to be, they used to be homed there. They're not. So for many people, I should say, that was too strong. And I apologize for people who have a religious home. I do not my, want my work to dehome you. That is not what I'm trying to do. If my work helps you become more at home within one of the legacy religions, great. But for many of us, nuns, N-O-N-E-S's, we can't pursue all of that within an organized religion. So we've created this term that's very nebulous about being spiritual. People will, in fact, contrast them. I'm spiritual but not religious. I engage in ritual practices. But often, as I said, that those are done fragmented they're done without a really philosophically, reflectively rational framework. They're done autodidactically and individually. And so they're beset by all of the potential danger of self-deception. So I think that's why people are turning to spirituality. But I, I fear that in many ways that spirituality is, has not been properly cult, cult, culturally cultivated and curated. We have a problem now that's growing psychologically of right, spiritual but not religious can often be covering for what's called spiritual bypassing. When people are into sort of wonderful experiences and alter alternative states of mind and, and that they, they disconnect from what was always connected way back when, even in the upper Paleolithic transition, spirituality enhances religio. If it isn't cultivating wisdom, which doesn't mean arcane knowledge of obscure or mumbled metaphysics, it means a profound ability to realize what's relevant, to care in the right way, to connect, to belong, to go into complex situations and not be torn apart by distraction or self-deception and home in, zero in on what matters most or what is going to matter most, anticipatory, and shaping oneself, one's agency and helping to shape the agencies of others so we are most profoundly, proportionately set, connected to reality. Spiritual bypassing means all that second half, the wisdom and the virtue and the virtuosity is not being addressed and we drift and we drift. <laughs>